who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Who can compare to your great worth? Worthy of all praise, matchless is your name. I'll sing a song of your great name. Forever I will praise you. I will lift my hands and praise you. For there is nobody like you. No one else deserves the praise like you do. Forever I will praise you. and praise you for there is nobody like you no one else deserves a praise like you do who is like who is like you lord in all the earth who can compare to your great worth worthy of all praise matchless is your name i'll sing a song of your great name forever i will praise you i will lift my hands and praise you for there is nobody like you no one else deserves the praise like you do forever i will praise you i will lift my hands and praise you Nobody like you. No one else deserves the praise like you do. Oh, there is no one like you, Lord. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? No one can compare to your great work. Who is like you, Lord? Hallelujah. Let's praise him together this morning. Somebody clap your hands and lift your voice. Call on the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. It's so good to have you in church on a Sunday morning. Are you excited to be here on a Sunday morning? Man, it doesn't look too good outside, but thankfully it's dry and you don't have to get struck by lightning in here, so it's a lot safer. Okay, that joke wasn't funny, apparently. Moving right along. I uh, want to make you aware of Easter coming up. It's coming up in a couple of Sundays here. We're going to be having one service at 10 a.m. There's also something that's not going to be happening here at the church. After church is over, we're going to have some other things taking place. Uh, more details to come about that from Pastor. And uh, we're just excited to have you here. We're going to have uh, Brother Jackie Workson preaching in the a.m. service this morning. Can we give that a hand? It's excited to have him and his family here. Amen. We're getting ready to go back into worship in a few minutes, but first we have a short video. Much more than a fun drive slogan, it's a mandate from the master. What's exciting about Save Our Children is it's actually seeing our children saved. I know a personal testimony today is that my daughter Emma 
uh, my middle girl, she was at a Save Our Children Holy Ghost rally that Brother Cannon and his team brought to the Missouri District. And when that team came to our church that night, she received the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. What a wonderful night to say, I'm involved with Save Our Children. And then my baby girl, Abby, was at a Missouri District Junior Camp that's sponsored by Save Our Children. And she too was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So I want to tell you that Save Our Children is much more than simply raising funds. It's actually seeing children saved. Praise the Lord, because isn't that the main goal, right? Seeing children saved and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just to kind of give you a little um, insight on things that we see that Save Our Children supports. Save Our Children supports our VBS. Save Our Children supports our Sunday school camps in our district, which, by the way, if you're 8 through 11, you are eligible to go to Sunday school camp. If you want to go, make sure that you speak with me or your Sunday school teacher, your parents. Let us know, and we will get you the information. But Save Our Children goes to support our Sunday school camp. Sunday school camp, believe it or not, is where I got my call to ministry, was at a Sunday school camp. It wasn't youth camp. It wasn't teenage camp. It wasn't grown-up camp. It was at Sunday school camp when the Lord touched my life. And it also happens to be where I met my husband, but that's a different story. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, so Save Our Children supports. Remember your M&M containers? They don't have to be full to bring them back. Every little bit helps, okay? Um, also, you can just bring a Ziploc bag full of coins or whatever you want to do. Now, we are taking up the Sunday after Easter will be our sacrificial Save Our Children offering date. But I know that's at the end of the month, and sometimes the end of the month can get a little tight. Can I hear an amen? So... Don't hesitate. If you need to give now, if you've got the extra money and you want to give it now, go ahead and put it in your envelope. Mark it, Save Our Children Offering, and we will make sure that that gets where it needs to go. We are excited about what God is doing in our Sunday school department. We are excited about what we're going to see happen in our children's lives because of our giving. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise today? And a worthy cause it is to reach out to children. We certainly appreciate the support that you give to save our children reaching out to kids. And they grow up to be adults. Brother Benson used to say that's how he built the East Nashville Church. They picked up children, did what they could to reach out to children. Those children eventually became young people, then adults. For those that are here today in the services, Pastor, of course, is uh, at the bedside of Sister Betty Harden this morning. They um, have a ventilator that's uh, being used. Family's been called in. And uh, his concern was that perhaps uh, needing to be there. He will move from Tupelo uh, after being with Sister Harden and the family. He's going to move on to the Dyersburg area and be with the Hodge family this afternoon. And he asked that I would mention to you that there is a visitation this afternoon from 1 until 5 for um, uh, the Hodge family, the passing, of course, of Fred's daughter this week. And they're doing a memorial service this afternoon. But there will be a visitation this afternoon from 1 to 5. And I think there's a memorial thing planned about 2 o'clock this afternoon. And so he's moving from Tupelo. Uh, after being with the Hardens, he will move on to Dyersburg and then back here tonight. For those that are in the music this afternoon, there is a special announcement in the bulletin today with regard to the music practice this afternoon. It's changed just a little bit. Uh, Brother Mike Cannon is going to be preaching tonight, and Pastor is going to be helping with the music this evening. They'll just kind of swap out there this evening. And so if you're a part of the music tonight, you need to note that uh, different time for a practice this afternoon in view of allowing the Hodge family some visitation. So remember that. We're giving you a time here, just a few moments, to dig out all those $100 bills. I got one amen. I'm in trouble. Amen. We do want to get you a chance today to fill out your envelopes. Let's give unto the Lord this morning. Amen. We do appreciate the facility and we appreciate the fact that the lights are on today. It's a very comfortable building. Amen. Praise God. We've just heard from uh, Brother Bernard was with us in our district conference this week and tells us about some places, especially even in Korea where his mother and father were missionaries for a long time. 
that uh, they do not have the facilities that we have today. We are appreciative of good buildings, and we appreciate the fact that you are supportive of such. So our ushers are coming this morning to wait upon us for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. God bless you as you prepare today to give as unto the Lord, and that makes a big difference. We're not giving it just to this building or to this uh, ministry, but we're giving it as unto the Lord, and I appreciate the privilege to give to God. How many has God given to you? Has God ever given anything to you? Amen. He really has. So God bless you as you prepare today to give in the Sunday morning tithe and offering. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity today to be in the house of God. And we're asking today that you would add your blessing to our gift and our giving today. We pray, God, that you would bless those that give this morning and this offering. We pray that you'll bless the furtherance of this service today and your will to be accomplished. We pray for those special needs today, both with the Harden family and the Hodge family today, and that you would watch over those, even pastor today, who tries to minister to both of these families. We ask God that you'd be near them, we pray, and we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and everyone said amen. God bless you. As they wait here this morning, bodily exercise, profit to the little, why don't you come up here and just kind of walk a little bit. Might even keep you awake to the path to preaching after a while. Let's come and give a good offering unto the Lord this day. God bless you. Amen. The disciples came to land, thus obeyed Christ's command, for the master called to them, now come and die. There they found their hearts desire, burning fish upon the fire, though he satisfies the hungry every time. Oh, come and die, the master call it, come and die. You ain't be sent, Jesus, to table all the time. Turn the water into wine Do the hungry call it now Come and die Soon the Lamb will take his bride To, to be ever at his side All the hosts of heaven will assemble be Oh, it will be a glorious sight All the saints in spotless white And when Jesus they will feast eternally Oh, come and die the master All the hosts of heaven will assemble be. Oh, will be a glorious sight. All the saints in spotless white. And when Jesus they will be eternally. Oh, come and die. The master call it come and die. You make peace at Jesus' table all the time. Thank you, Jesus. You are a prayer answering God. And we thank for God for that day that is to come. We praise you. Hallelujah. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary. Oh, oh. 
The song is a victory. more praise today. God, I thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you do, God. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If they would project the prayer request list today. I have a question for you before we get started on these needs. If you have received a touch from God, any time in your life, raise your hand. If God has answered your need, if you have a need today, you can look around and see God is still in the miracle working business. God is still here today. He is still working on our needs. So if your need hasn't happened yet, it's okay. We serve an on-time God. It may, be, it may not be our timing, but it will be on time in God's book. So if we could, let's, let's pray for these needs today. Let's continue to remember uh, the Hodge family, as, as uh, Brother Wilkinson had said. Uh, they have the visitation today. Let's also remember... Uh, Sister Betty Harden and that family as well, uh, as well as the needs on the list. If you have a need today that just you would like to have as unspoken, you can raise your hand to that. And you can keep that hand up. Let's go to God in prayer. God, I thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Jesus. Lord, you see, Lord, the needs, God, that we have today, Lord. It's on our projection list, God. Lord, you know, Lord, there, some of them have been there for a very long time, Jesus. And we pray, God, that you'll touch and bless Jesus. Lord, you know every single person's problems, God, Lord, that they have, Lord, that they're bringing to you, Lord, during this time, Jesus. Lord, I pray, Lord, you touch and bless, God. Lord, we know, Lord, you're an all-time God. You're an on-time God, Jesus. Lord, we know, Lord, that you'll touch and you'll bless, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. And we can give God just a little more thanks for what he's going to do today. God, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You believe the presence of the Lord is here this morning? Why don't you lift your hands towards heaven? Just magnify the Lord with me. Jesus is in. Jesus is in this room. Here I now. Here I now. Making this place I stand. Oh. Holy ground. 
veil is torn, sing. The veil is torn, the doors swing wide. I see glory as I run inside the throne room. Before you, I bow. The veil is torn, the doors swing wide. I see glory. Because we want to be in his throne room today, to be in his presence, to feel him, 
to know that he's here with us today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody just clap your hands unto the Lord. There ought to be a shout of praise in your mouth right now. Hallelujah, you ought to exalt the Lord. He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Many occasions in the Old Testament when they were going out to fight and battle, there was prayer that was made beforehand, even times of fasting that was called even by kings. But right before the victory, there came a shout. Hallelujah. The priests would blow their trumpets. People would lift their voice. No doubt they probably cheered and clapped their hands and leaped for joy, whatever they had to do. But then God brought the victory. Hallelujah. You don't want to know how you defeat the devil and you bring the victory. It's when you've already been praying, when you've already been fasting, and you open your mouth and declare, I'm going to praise the Lord right now because my victory is on the way. Hallelujah. I feel the joy. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. I feel the joy. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost is all over me. I'm a I feel the 
worship the Lord together today. Let's give praise to God. He's in this house. He wants us to worship Him. He desires our praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, for the joy of the Holy Ghost, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All over this building today have given the opportunity there could be testimony after testimony given of what God has done in people's lives and the loosing that God has made in people's lives. For there have been addictions, there has been bondage. Everybody's experienced bondage in some form or fashion, but the Lord is in the delivering business, isn't he? Amen. Praise God. And if you're in this building today and you need deliverance, you're at the right place. That's right. Jesus said to that multitude that came, told his disciples, they have no need to depart what they need can be found right here among his disciples. I believe it ought to be that way we feel about the house of God today. Whatever your need is, you're in the right place. It can be taken care of here in this service today. If you're a visitor this morning in this service, on behalf of a pastor who is ministering to families today, one looks like in the final stages of life, and the other, of course, that family that's had a death in their family. This has been a, a bad week in reality for this church because... Uh, one, of course, the mainstay of Sister Mathis last weekend, and then, of course, Fred Hodge's daughter, and now the look like on Sister Betty Harden, but uh, God gives strength to all. But if you're here today, a visitor, let me just say how much we appreciate your being with us this morning in this service, and we trust that you're enjoying being a part of Harvest Church in Humboldt this morning. God will bless you as you reach out to Him. He never fails that He will be there for us, won't He? Amen, and I appreciate that. It's always good to be in Humboldt, worship the Lord with you. 
and feel the presence of God. I want to commend Brother Cannon and the praise singers for a great job this morning leading us in worship. They always do a good job, and we appreciate that contribution today. Amen. Let's praise God. Well, Sister Wilkerson and I, we are struggling with um, sheetrock dust, I guess. Uh, both of us are all stopped up this morning, can't hardly breathe or talk, and so when you can't breathe or talk, you can still play banjo, I guess. So that's what we're going to do this morning. Amen. Praise God. So uh, all I need is a little help out there. If I can get some folks that will just grin a little bit, I'll do the picking this morning. If we can just get a little smile out there somewhere, Sister Wilkerson. That's what we need. Well, we've got folks that are here today on a good rainy Sunday morning. Amen. A little liquid sunshine, but that will make your flowers grow make your gardens grow to make your grass grow I don't know which of those growing you like the best but I'm, I'm, I feel like probably the least you like is the growing of the grass but uh, I don't know springtime is my favorite time of the year really I like I like coming out of that dead of winter I'm not a winter person I, I get through it but that's all I do is get through it but uh, I appreciate the spring of the year when things start coming back alive and blossoms and blooms and greenery starts happening again praise God for it. hallelujah let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise today what's called a great white throne judgment books are going to be opened we believe that probably one of those books is the word of God and and perhaps the book of life the Lamb's book of life we believe that there will be a judging according to John the Revelator. There will be a judging from that book of books, the Word of God, and perhaps even the looking to find our names recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, back in the day when all of us were in, in school, they had what was called roll call. And, you know, if you were a canon, that was, that was kind of a neat place to be in roll call time. If you was up there in the seas... That was kind of a neat place to be, you know. And the canon, the group of canons. If you were, were um, Wilkerson or White, you're on the tail end of the thing. You know what I'm saying? And the only hope we got, Brother White, is what the Scripture says, the last shall be first. That's what we're holding on for. That In that day, uh, we're going to have uh, the roll call and we're going to be there. But somebody pinned a song. It is alive and well. We're going to play a bit of a song that says, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. I'll be there.
there. I saw a few folks joining with me this morning and smiled just a little bit. Amen. Yeah, they tell me now that it takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. I don't see why you're working when you don't have to today. Amen. Let's take the easy route, okay? Praise God. What a friend we have in Jesus. are bad, he's still your friend, isn't he? Amen. Praise God. Remember service tonight. Brother Cannon is going to be doing the preaching tonight, the evening service. I know that you'll enjoy Brother Cannon. does a great job preaching. He's always been very diligent about studying the Word of God and delivering the Word. And you'll enjoy that in the evening service tonight. Let's stand together as we go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter number 12 today. Appreciate your being faithful to the house of the Lord, even with Pastor making some rounds today that are needed. He talked to me late last night, then he talked to me a couple times this morning, one of them just before he was going into the hospital in Tupelo. And we pray that things are going well with him and the travel there from Tupelo and then on to Dyersburg this afternoon. Acts chapter 12, verse number 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. The angel said unto Peter, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so Peter did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. Verse number 9 is an interesting text. The Bible says that Peter went out, and he follows the angel, but he wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. One translation says Peter didn't realize that what was being done by the angel was real. He didn't, real, he didn't believe it was really real. Have you ever had an experience? Maybe you didn't really think it was real. You just felt like maybe this is it's not true. The Bible says that as Peter followed this angel through this procession of getting him out of this prison, he wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came to the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Now, now Kroger thought they had the first electric doors but they really didn't have them Acts chapter 12 verse 10 tells us that 
they had automatic doors back even in the word of God. The iron gate opened of its own accord. They went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety. Now I know of a surety. In verse number nine, he, he, he just didn't know if this was all really true or not. Now he says, I know of a surety. The Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of Jews. Now we've got one more group of people that gotta, they've got to find out that this is really real. When he had considered the thing, Peter came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Unfortunately, in verse 15, they did not believe this was real. And when they said to her, you are mad, she constantly affirmed, it's even so. Then said they, it's his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door, they saw him and they were astonished. There have been given times where the Lord has worked in, in some special ways and, and sometimes a little hard for the mind to fathom it. Sometimes hard to grasp it. Sometimes it's put a, a little difficult to put a handle on things that God does. And I've even had people say, well, I, I just think that's just a little bit too good to be true. You know, Israel crossing through the, the Red Sea on dry land. That sounds a little far-fetched, doesn't it? Just the east wind start blowing and the mighty body of the Red Sea just, just to the, drive to the side, left and right. Israel. I just want to tell you today, my friend, that there are lots of things today that get misrepresented in my world. But there's one thing that's not misrepresented, and that's the operation of God. The operation of God. God is still a true God. God still does good things, and he does them well, and he does them right. And when it's God and it's involved with God, I'm telling you, my friend, with God, it is not too good to be true. With God, it is not too good to be true. Let's thank God for his word today. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for the privilege today to assemble together the house of God. And I pray that you will bless even today the ministry of the word. Help us to have receptive hearts to receive the word in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen. God bless you as you are seated. It's unfortunate that we live in a world today. Now, I know we presently have a president that goes ahead and calls it like it is, calls it fake news, fake news. It's unreal, though. False advertising, false advertising. It's the use of false or misleading or unproven information to advertise to us, the consumer, products, and the advertising frequently does not disclose its source. One of the forms of false advertising is a claim that a product will have health benefits or contain vitamins or minerals that, in fact, it does not have. For instance, many of you, for a long, long time, you've probably been users of a product that's called Listerine. They're going to show you a little picture there. of Lister Listerine, when it first was introduced... Listerine's claim was it could prevent and cure colds, sore throats. Rinsing with Listerine was as effective as flossing in fighting tooth and gum decay. It sounded good. It sounded real good. And so their advertising blitz said that, that it would do all those things. Unfortunately, the Federal Trade Commission got involved it was initially sold as a surgical antiseptic in the 19th century. Listerine was the first product marketed as a mouthwash, and it started in 1914. But in 1976, in a landmark case, it was declared that the health claims were bogus, and they forced the company Warner Lambert, its manufacturer at the time, to spend $10 million on ads saying, contrary to prior advertising, Listerine will not help prevent colds or sore, or sore throats or lessen their severity. In 2005, that's a little closer to you in my time, a federal judge ordered the maker of Listerine to pull its commercials claiming that rinsing with Listerine was as effective as flossing in fighting tooth and gum decay. The truth of the matter was, 
it wasn't true what they said Listerine would do. I'm sorry to kind of bust your bubble there, but nevertheless, a product that's called Airborne. They'll give you a little picture of Airborne here. Yeah. Airborne was advertised, the claim was, the vitamin, the vitamin and the herbal supplement advertised as a miracle cold buster fights off colds and builds immune system. However, in 2006, on ABC's Good Morning America, an investigation claimed that this coal remedy reporting that its clinical trials were not even conducted by doctors. They made a claim that there was not even the first doctor involved in their claim. And so two years later, in 2008, the company agreed to pay consumers $23 million in a class action settlement because they advertised wrong. It was just too good to be true. Too good to be true. Dannon put on the market a yogurt. This yogurt was called Activa. The claim was that this yogurt would help prevent colds and the flu. That one daily serving of this yogurt would relieve temporary irregularity and it would help with slow intestinal transit time. You can interpret all that, okay? <laughs> and the FTC said, I'm sorry, but your claim is false. And so, in 2010, a judge ordered Dannon, the yogurt baker, to pay 45, now I'm going to tell you, 45 million is quite a bit of money. 45 million dollars was paid in damages because the yogurt was wrongly advertised. It was too good to be true. And I, now I'm already on your hit list today because you like that yogurt and I know you just enjoyed it and it helped you get the, over the flu. Praise God. <laughs> Ironically, the Auric Vacuum Company. <laughs> Auric Vacuum. Their claim was that this product would reduce the risk of flu and other illnesses while eliminating virtually all common germs and allergens. However, in 2011, a settlement of $750,000, that's not just pocket change, $750,000, Oryx stopped touting the, problem, the product's alleged germ-fighting benefits, benefits rather, after reaching a 700 and I believe I'd stop talking if they had to pay out $750,000 for what I'm saying, I think I'd quit saying. And so they did. They did. Boy, I'm, I've lost all of my consumers now, haven't I? Hang on. Nutella, Nutella. I wouldn't even ask for a show of hands. The hazelnut and chocolate spread that was advert they claim this treat was a healthy food. They claimed it was a healthy food. Come to find out, it contained dangerous levels of saturated fat and was more than 55% processed sugar. And lunch boxes will look different this next week. They settled a class action lawsuit for $2.5 million in April of 2012. We're just talking seven years ago. $2.5 million because what they said was too good to be true. Now that's amazing. That's amazing. Let me, let me just give you one more today. And I know that, that this is all, it just, you know, in the advertising world, Many, many times, false advertisement, it, it's, it's, it, it's done through, they do photo retouching. They do photo retouching. That, those pictures that you see sometimes of that before and after business, especially, especially on those weight loss commercials that portray, you know, somebody that just looks like that they're nearly nothing now. And just a few weeks ago, they were this blowed out of proportion situation. 
They can retouch with Photoshop and they can advertise. But many of these, these companies, these advertisers for, for, for weight loss and you use these, these impressions of this, they find out they get themselves in trouble because what they're saying is too good to be true. It's interesting to me, and I, I was kind of hanging on to this one, hoping it was going to be working pretty good, but I found out that that box of, uh, of Rice Krispies, oh boy, didn't I hit a soft spot now. In 2010, Kellogg's Rice Krispies cereal claimed that the cereal could improve a child's immunity, and the company was forced to discontinue all advertising stating such claims. And in 2015, the same company advertised, we, we got to change our advertising. It's not what we said it was. And they paid $5 million to resolve the issue. I'm sorry, Rice Krispies is not going to improve your child's immunity. Now, I know I'm not just giving you anything here today that you just, you're falling out of your seats over. But the bottom line is, a lot of things today that get advertised are too good to be true. But I said all of that to say that I'm here today very confident in this pulpit. If indeed the statement, too good to be true, means it's too positive to be real, or it's too positive to be believable, that it's so good that it's difficult or hard to believe, seeming very good but not real. I can stand very confident in this pulpit this morning to tell you that with God, with God, any claim that his book makes, any claim that's made about God or anything that God does is not too good to be true. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now who, who would have ever thought two or three million people could come up against this body of water called the Red Sea and Moses would just stretch out his rod, if you please, just hold that stick out there and the Bible would tell us that that water would part left and right and a multitude of two to three million people would go across that body that the water had been. They would go across on dry land to many folk. If you advertise such, even if you talked it today, there would be people to say that's too good to be true. And especially those that experience some of the things that I've just given to you this morning, the false claims. But I stand in this pulpit today to tell this audience that with God, it's not too good to be true. You're reading it in your Bible. It is reality, my friend. They went across on dry land. I have no reason to believe today that God did not keep his word and that the word of God is not accurate in much as saying that Israel went across the Red Sea on dry land. It's difficult for us to imagine the Israelites' army merely marching around the city. Walled city is Jericho. Walking around that city every day for six days. And then on the seventh day, a march around town. And then shouting. And the walls of that city falling down. That would seem unheard of today. That would seem a little bit far-fetched. And if you talk that kind of story in my world today, they'll believe Listerine. They would believe Nutella. But they wouldn't believe you if you started talking about people just walking around a city that had walls and those walls falling down. But I stand confident in this pulpit today to tell you that with God, it's not too good to be true. With God, it's not too good to be true. For God is a God that does not lie. He is a God that does not change. He is a God that is forever real. And he is a God that forever keeps his word. Amen. Our infinite mind by itself can't wrap around the idea of placing a man in a den of lions. Just throwing him in the den of lions. 
throwing three Hebrew boys into a fiery furnace. We can't wrap our minds around neither the lions or the fire harming those who were thrown into it. That sounds too good to be true. That sounds far-fetched. That sounds unreal. That would sound like it's just impossible for it to be that way. But yet this book of books tells us a man was put into a den of lions. He had been praying three times a day. He was a pretty powerful package when they throwed him in there. And I've heard everything from the fact that the angel gave the, the lion's locked jaw to whatever. All I know is that Daniel said the next morning that the Lord sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Oh, friend, what would seem to be an impossibility that even when you pulled those three Hebrew boys out of the fiery furnace, there was not any smell of smoke. Come on. There was not any smell of Come on, Brother Wilkerson. That's too good to be true. No, no. With God, it's not too good to be true. With God, it's not too good to be true. My friend, they got to looking around on them. Their hair wasn't even singed. They had been in the fiery furnace, but God had protected them, and he had preserved them, and he saved them. I'm saying in this pulpit today, my friend, uh, under normal circumstances, these would seem to be impossible situations. Uh, but when you've got a God, uh, that there is nothing impossible with God. With God, it's not too good to be true. It's just, I don't know about you, I've seen some, I've been in a few aquariums. I've been in a few of those areas where you can look into the fish tank and see some pretty good sized fish. Under normal circumstances, it would be hard to dream of a man being swallowed by a great fish. And the uniqueness, even if there had been a fish that big, him to be able to stay in that fish's belly for about three days, and not be consumed? Come on. Most of the things we eat, you know, that's what we hope will happen anyhow. A few days, our digestive system will take care of it. I think it was the plan of God for fish to have the same type of digestive system. But the uniqueness of this fish, and your Bible tells you that this was a fish that God prepared. It was a special fish. And that this great fish who would have the uniqueness of a belly that would become the prayer room for a man that was running away from God. And then for three days in the midst, and, and we are not spared everything that was in that belly's fish. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There are some things we weren't told about. But we're told there was some seaweed in there. There was some stuff that was you know, typical from the ocean. But the bottom line was for three days, a prayer meeting, a prayer room, a place where a man would be literally swallowed by a great fish and for three days would spend some time in the belly of that. Oh, come on, Brother Wilkerson. That's just a little bit too good to be true. That's a little too good to be. No, no, no. Not when it's God. Come on, not when it's God. When it's God, I'm telling you today, he sits on the throne. He rules the universe. And even this very morning, he's got everything in control. I'm not in question of what God's going to do with the end time. I'm not questioning what God's doing with my time. For with God, it's not too good to be true. The angel Gabriel shows up on the doorstep of a young virgin Mary. The whole setup, the whole setup just seems too good to be true. Angel stands there and starts talking to this young lady about how she's going to be the mother of the Christ child. She don't, she, she's never even, she don't even know a man. And yet the angel's telling her how this is all going to happen. And she's just taken back a bit when she says, the Bible says that Mary was troubled with Gabriel's saying. I believe I would have been too if I had been in her case. I mean, she's being told how that God's going to use her. And she even asked the question in verse 34, how shall this be? And then she is told in verse 37, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, 
I want to speak to somebody in this service today, and I don't know who you are and what situations you might be undergoing right this very moment, but I want to tell you, my friend, that this morning in this service, you may feel like you're facing situations that's just impossible for you to get through. It's impossible for you to handle, and you don't know which direction you're going to turn. Let this pulpit today declare to you this truth, my friend, that with God nothing is too good to be true, that even this morning God can meet the need that you you may have Peter found out in Acts chapter 12 that though he was bound by 16 soldiers though he was behind iron gates and everything looked to be such an impossible situation for any type of escape and that even for Peter for a while according to verse 9 he could not the Bible said he wished not that it was true he himself thought I don't think this is happening to me As I said, one translation even says that. Peter didn't even think it was real. He just thought, maybe I'm having a bad dream here. Maybe this is something that that I'm just kind of thinking it's going to happen. And finally, when he gets outside that gate and he's on the street, my friend, the Bible said, he declared, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and given me deliverance. I'm here to tell somebody in the service this morning that if your situation looks too good to be true, it won't be if you'll let God get in on it. It won't be if you'll let God get in on it. That's the thing we have to understand today. It's kind of like when Jesus, you know, he, he was coming out of the city and, and, and one morning in the Bible said he was hungry and he, he saw the fig tree in the way and he came to it finding nothing on the tree but leaves only and immediately spoke to that tree and said, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. My Bible says, and presently the fig tree withered away. It wasn't like it was a few days and it happened. It wasn't like it took another season for it to take place. But right then and there, Jesus spoke and the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, the Bible said they marveled saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? And Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and you would not doubt, you should not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but you can say unto this mountain. Now you could name that mountain today. You can name that mountain because some of you have got different mountains that you're facing. And Jesus just simply uses a term here for an analogy. He said, you could say to your mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it shall be done. For all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. I'm here to give some encouragement to somebody this morning in this service that whatever mountain you may be up against, it may be domestic, it may be financially, it may be physically, it may be that you've got a spiritual situation. It's a mountain that you're up against today can I stand in this pulpit and tell you that with God it's not too good to be true that with God there can be victories that with God there can be a deliverance Jesus expressed to his disciples that they could have the same control through faith and so it were in Peter's deliverance he wished not that the angel was literally bringing him out of his bondage but he thought it was too good to be true Peter's deliverance wasn't predicated merely upon the power of the fact that the church was praying or Rhoda telling them that the prayer had been answered for even they were having a problem believing that this is just too good to be true. But oh, thank God. Thank God for those that will still believe that God can do something that's beyond the realities that the world would even place. You ever heard somebody say, well, the church is living beneath its privileges. We get inundated sometimes with lower levels of faith and small vision. The devil's fighting the church today to not be the powerhouse it's designed to be. He wants to keep the church weak need. He wants to keep the church carnal. He wants to keep the church non-spiritual, always having to beg people to pray. The devil does not want the church to discover themselves. And so it were that we read such passages like in Luke chapter 3 and verse 15. The people were in expectation. They were in expectation of what God was going to do. And John said, I indeed baptize you with water. But there's one that's mightier than I who's going to come. Whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. 
He would simply say, hey, I want some of you to realize today there may be situations that you're up against and there may be somebody sitting in this very pew this morning uh, that you're saying it's just too good to be true, Brother Wilkerson. My situation is not, there's just no way. It just is not going to be a reality. I'm standing here today to encourage you that faith in God can change that situation, uh, that believing God this morning uh, can still bring about. The Bible said Jesus Christ uh, is the same yesterday, uh, today, and forever. Uh, whatever he's done any where he can do right here in this building today. Whatever he's done before, he can do it again. God is still a delivering God. He's still a God that sets people free. He's still a baptizer. He's still a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Just one week ago today in one of our churches in the city of Nashville, a lady testified about a miracle that happened in her life. Supposedly cancer had been found in her body. And they were going to take her to surgery for the procedure to take care of perhaps removing the cancer. The doctor claimed that, well, I like to just kind of double check before I take somebody to surgery. And service she had been into, she felt in that service, she felt a surge of heat right where the cancer was supposed to be. She felt that God had touched her, but she went on following through with all the procedures that they wanted to do. And just before taking her into surgery, one more time, one checking, one look and see if it's just, you want to make sure. The doctor came back and said to her, I'm, I'm glad to tell you that it's not found anymore. We can't find it. Now, that's not just one of those coincidental things. I know people would say, that just sounds too good to be true, Brother Wilkerson, but not with God, folks. With God, it's not too good to be true. All things are possible with God. Nothing's too great to be true with the God that's in this building this morning. Hallelujah. 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 I came from old time Pentecost. My first pastor, he, he believed you could just have, if you've had car problem, you could stop on the side of the road. Take out a bottle of oil and just anoint that, oil, that car with an oil and pray in that car. I know people say, boy, that's, that's kind of that's something wrong with him. I've heard the old timers. I've, talk, I've heard talk, them talk about. I remember a man telling one time in our, in our part of the area where I was raised, he told about going down the road one day, and the Lord spoke to him to get out of his car and just go out in the woods and start preaching. He said, I pulled my car off on the side of the road, went into the woods, Rare back, preached a great message. Got back in my car and took off. About a week later, in Harville, Missouri, a little block church, he walked in the service and a man walked up to him. He said, Preacher, do you remember a few days ago stopping your vehicle beside the road, getting out, going in the woods and preaching? He, he tucked his head. He thought, yeah, they think there's something wrong with me. He said, you didn't know it, but I was behind one of those trees out there in those woods. And you preached the message right to me. And within a few short days, he said, I came to this little block church and I repented of my sins and God baptized me with the Holy Ghost. Oh, that sounds too good to be true, don't it? <laughs> but with God, it's not too good to be true. I heard the old timer that testified. I never saw proof. I didn't check his gas can. He said he was en route to preach a meeting, ran out of fuel. Walked down on the embankment into a little spring of water. Got a little water and put in that tank. Prayed over that tank of water. And asked the Lord to make it fuel. Now don't be running out there today and trying to do some of that stuff. But if he could turn water to wine. Now I got more of you on board with me with that one, didn't I? Yeah. He turned water to wine. Good wine, better than the wine they drank and got and given it to them earlier. That's, that's typical of the Lord, isn't it? But I heard the old timer the tell about run out there, ran out of fuel, filled it, put it in, put that in his tank and prayed over it. And the Lord let him go to the next place where he was going to be carrying a message. Found that canister, filled it with water, went back to the side of the road, put his God, if you, he prayed that prayer. He said, God, if you could turn water to wine, you can turn water into fuel. And God gave him. He fired that vehicle up and drove it on to where he preached. I read in the Bible one day where Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon. See, these folks think they're real smart today when they talk about daylight saving time. And even your state legislature is now trying to pass it so you can have daylight saving time year-round. <laughs> they did just last week. It's going to be interesting. I hope all the world, I hope all the states do it, or we're going to be real confused when we cross state line what time it is. <laughs> 
But Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon and said, Stand still, we need a little bit daylight saving time. <laughs> and your Bible tells us that in the middle of a battle, where they needed more day to finish that battle. God allowed that man of God to speak to the sun and the moon. Now, I know people sitting in this building today probably thinking, you know, if I went out and started talking like that, there's some folks who want me committed. They think something's wrong with me. I want to tell you something, friend. With God, it's not too good to be true. With God, it's not. We've got to understand this morning that when Peter kept knocking on that door, and the Bible says that when they finally opened that door, they were astonished. They were astonished. Now, if you will open up your Bible to Acts chapter 12 today where I read my text. And if you'll look at this particular passage. Verse number 16. Everybody just look real close at it. Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened. Look at the next two words. If you looked at it in your Bible today. They are italicized. The door is italicized. And your good English teacher would tell you that that could be read without those two words and it should not change the context of that verse. That when they, the Bible said, Peter continued knocking and when they had opened, they saw him and they were astonished. Here's the secret. The King James gives us these two words in italicize or italics that, that we have to understand the secret to their having this miracle with Peter is somebody would open up to it. Somebody would open up to it. God can't do your miracle if you keep the door shut. God can't do for you as long as you've got the clenched fist or you've got every, I like that, that beautiful statement on all of our trans, the, the uh, lessons that we used in search for truth and we still use the very first statement on every little lesson handout. Open your heart when you open your Bible. And every time we would teach one of those lessons, we would emphasize that same truth. We're here to open our heart when we open our Bible. The thing that brought that deliverance to that New Testament church in Acts chapter 12 is somebody was willing to open up to it. Somebody would dare to open up and say, let's see if this is really real. Let's see if this is really Peter. Oh, it may be somebody today is a little too close-minded and the Holy Ghost is telling you, if I I can just get you to open your mind to the possibility if I could just get you to open your mind to the potential if I can just get you to open your mind to the availability if I can just get you to open your mind to the reality it's not too good to be true God is still looking for somebody that will open up to it Paul said in writing to the Corinthian church and brother Cannon if you all would come back the Bible said the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we all with open face, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. They couldn't believe that Peter was at that door. They couldn't believe while they were still praying. They couldn't get a handle on the fact that Peter was there. The devil's trying his best today to tell us the best days for the church are behind us. Best days are past. He's trying his best to get us to believe it's too good to be true. You can't have that kind of revival. Hey, I remember when we first came in the church, we had a joint on the corner. It was a tavern. We had a park on the street for our little storefront in St. Louis. We walked by that building with all of its stench and all of it was going on. The doors would be wide open while we walked past it going to church. One night, pastor got up and said, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do, church. You all are having to walk by that place on the corner down there. We're going to pray that God will take care of that situation for us. And I'll not forget the night we got out of our vehicles and started walking down that sidewalk. And when we came up to that building on the corner, it was all boarded up. 
closed, out of business. We always believe that the prayer of God's church shut down a joint that the devil had on our way to going to the house of God. I know those kind of things sound too good to be true, but I'm telling you, my friend, we're talking about a God that does not know limitations, a God that does not, he honors our faith. His word is declared that what will happen, ironically, it is going to happen. And so it were the Bible said, Peter, even standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said on the day of Pentecost that these that have been accused of being drunken are not drunken as you suppose seeing it's but the third hour of the day that may seem to be what's happening here but he said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel and it will come to pass in the last days God said he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions your old men will dream dreams and on servants and handmaidens God will pour out his spirit It's up to us to open to it. Just like the Bible said in Acts 12, when they had opened, they realized it was true. Peter was standing there. It's up to us today to open up to what seems to be too good to be true. Open our minds to the fulfillment of God's word. Open our faith to what God is doing and will do. Would you stand to your feet right now? All over this building, what do we ask the Lord to help us with our faith today? Let's pray right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, help us this morning. Help us in this place today, God. Help us, Lord, to put faith. Help us to open up. And let that what you'd like to do in our lives, God. Help us, Lord, to be open to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord. The secret's being open to what God wants to do for you this morning. I don't know who you are. I don't know what God wants to do for you. But if the enemy stepped up on the shoulder of you and said, it's just too good to be true. Not with God. With God, it's not too good to be true. With God, it's possible. With God today, while this altar area is all opened up for anybody that would like to come and pray, for anybody that like to come, move on that chair and into this altar area, we believe God can answer your need today. We believe God can supply your need today. We believe God can meet the faith of that individual. While they sing for us right now, why don't you move this direction? Why don't you come right now? Whoever, anybody, why don't you come? Everybody, let's move it around this altar area right now. Everybody that will. With God, it's not too good to be true. With God, it's not too good to be true. They're coming. They're coming. Why don't you join with us today? Awesome. Awesome. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He can move move mountains. mountains. He can move your mountain today. Come on, that's it. They're coming all over this building. Come on. Yes, God, we need you to help us today, God. God Look at our faith, God. We're opening up to you, Jesus. We're opening up to you today. That's it. Come on.
is holy. 